today's video is going to be the mole concept. And what we're talking about when we talk about the mole concept is essentially counting tiny things by weighing them out in large batches. We're going to find that this is a very doable and convenient way to work with things like atoms and molecules and things of that nature. So what I'd like to do is just introduce the topic by getting us used to the fact that we can group things, for example, when we use them or sell them or buy them or whatever the case may be. So just a really simple example, you guys know that we normally buy or sell eggs by the dozen. You don't go to the grocery store and buy just one or two eggs, you buy eggs in a pack of a dozen. All right, so we know that a dozen is a counting or grouping unit. So we know that one dozen eggs or whatever else is essentially a unit that suggests that we have 12 eggs. We know that when we buy a dozen eggs and we open up the package, we're going to have 12 eggs in that cart. All right? So that's an example of how we group things to buy them, sell them, use them, whatever the case may be. So let's just look at a slightly more complex example, but still fairly simple. Let's just put together a scenario here where we happen to um, work in a candy shop. And the candy shop specializes in selling jelly beans. Hey, I love jelly beans. Who doesn't like jelly beans? So the idea here is that when a customer comes into the shop, that person is not going to buy just one or two or five jelly beans. Chances are that customer wants to buy a larger batch of jelly beans. So what we're going to do is we're going to sell jelly beans by the one gross bag. Okay, so that means I'm going to be putting a whole bunch of jelly beans in one bag, and then when the person buys those jelly beans, they know essentially how many jelly beans are going to be in that bag. So a gross, again, is a grouping unit like a dozen is. So one gross of anything actually contains 144 of those particular items. So if I have a one gross bag of jelly beans, then that bag will presumably contain 144 jelly beans, all packaged up nice for you to go and buy. All right, so your job at the candy shop is to sort those jelly beans into the bags where each bag contains one gross or 144 jelly beans. Now, this seems like it could be a pretty boring task because if you were to go and do this, you'd have a bag here and a pile of jelly beans over here and you'd probably just start picking up jelly beans and counting them one after the other into the bag until you put 144 of them in there. Okay, that works, but it's a pretty inefficient way of getting the job done. A better way to do this would be to count by weighing in a large batch. All right? So we ought to be able to do a fairly simple calculation to figure out what the mass of one gross or 144 jelly beans is going to be if we knew what the mass of a single jelly bean is. Okay, so jelly beans might vary a little bit in mass, but we could maybe weigh 10 of them and then calculate an average mass of a jelly bean. So let's say that we did that. And we found that the average mass of a single jelly bean is 1.25 grams, all right? So the question now is what mass of jelly beans would then go into each bag? Now that's nice because you could calculate that mass. You could put a scale over here, dump jelly beans onto the scale until you get to that mass, and then you can pretty well take it to the bank that you've got 144 jelly beans in that collection. You then just move them directly to the bag and you're done. So it's a whole lot faster than individually counting jelly beans out. All right? So we got a couple conversion factors we can use here to do this calculation. First off, we're going to have one gross of jelly beans in the bag. I know that one gross of jelly beans equals to 144 jelly beans. The other thing I know is the average mass of a jelly bean. So one jelly bean has a mass of 1.25 grams. So here's the simple calculation we put together. I want one gross of jelly beans in the bag, so that's my starting point. I know that I've got 144 jelly beans per gross of jelly beans. So you can see that gross cancels with gross. All right. Then I also have the average mass of a jelly bean. So I know that I've got 1.25 grams per individual jelly beans. So jelly beans cancel top and bottom. Just a simple units conversion problem like we've done before. You do the math here and you end up getting 180 grams of jelly beans. So all we have to do is go to a scale, pour jelly beans onto the scale until we get a mass of 180 grams. And we know then that that's going to be 144 jelly beans or one gross, maybe plus or minus one jelly bean. 
So maybe you can put a couple in for good measure just to make the customer happy, bag it up, and you're good to go. All right, so let's do a couple more simple problems involving jelly beans before we get into atoms. So another um, problem that we could ask ourselves would be, well, how many jelly beans are in 15 bags of jelly beans? So let's say I want to have a party. So I'm going to serve out a lot of jelly beans at this party. So I'm going to go buy 15 bags of jelly beans. Either that or I just really like jelly beans. So I can go through and utilize my conversion factors that I've established before to figure that out. So if I start with my 15 bags of jelly beans, I know that 15 bags will cancel here since so one roast of jelly beans are found in each bag. All right. Now remember, I'm trying to get to number of jelly beans. I also know how many things are in a gross. I know that there are 144 jelly beans per gross of jelly beans. So now if I uh, multiply this out, 15 times 144 is 2,160 jelly beans in the 15 bags. That's a lot of jelly beans, folks. All right, so let's say I'm gonna have an even bigger party here. So now what I wanna do is I wanna get 15 kilograms of jelly beans. That's even more jelly beans. So the question is, to get 15 kilograms of jelly beans, how many bags of jelly beans now do I need to buy? Now, I'm going to remind you of one other conversion factor that we saw in the previous part of the video. Remember that one gross of jelly beans is the same as 180 grams of jelly beans. We were able to establish that because we knew what the mass of an average jelly bean was. Okay? So I can use that as a useful conversion factor to save me some steps here. So I'm going to start out with my 15 kilograms of jelly beans. I'm going to convert kilograms to grams. So kilograms will cancel top and bottom. Now I want to use my conversion factor that I've established to convert between mass and gross. All right. So I know that one gross of jelly beans has a mass of 180 grams of jelly beans. So notice now that grams of jelly beans will cancel top and bottom. I'm left with gross. Now, I also know that a bag of jelly beans contains a gross of jelly beans, so I can establish this final conversion factor here, where gross now will cancel top and bottom. I'm left with bags. So in order to get my 15 kilograms of jelly beans, I've got to buy 83.3 bags of jelly beans. Now, of course, I can't buy a third of a bag of jelly beans, so I'm just going to take that up to 84 bags, so I'll just have a little bit left over. Hey, that's not a problem. I love jelly beans. All right, so now let's take this same sort of argument over to tiny particles like atoms. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to treat atoms pretty much like jelly beans. So if you think about it, atoms are extremely tiny. We can't weigh out individual atoms. We can't even weigh out grosses of atoms. In other words, atoms are so tiny, I need a huge number of them before I can even get them to uh, register, for example, on a balance. Okay? So we're going to need some sort of accounting or grouping um, factor here, like a gross or a dozen, but it's going to have to contain a lot more things in order to make these masses actually meaningful to us. In other words, make these masses something we can actually measure on a balance. All right, so here's how we do it. I'm gonna start out with a single carbon atom here. We know that an average carbon atom has a mass of 12.011 AMUs. Remember, the AMU is an atomic mass unit. So now here's the experiment I'd like to think about. What I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to be able to count out individual carbon atoms and I want to know how many carbon atoms I would have to count out until I got, registering on my balance, a total mass of 12.011 grams of carbon atoms. So in other words, what I want to do is I want to find out how many carbon atoms I'm going to need to go from a mass of 12.011 AMUs for one carbon atom up to a total mass of 12.011 grams for a big collection of carbon atoms. So the question now is, how many carbon atoms would I need to count out and weigh to get to that point? And the answer is a big number. It's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Okay? That's how many carbon atoms I would have to count out to get my balance to register a total mass of 12.011 grams of carbon atoms. That now becomes my collection factor, my grouping factor, like a dozen, like a gross, but this is going to be the, um, 
grouping factor that I'm going to use for tiny, tiny things like atoms and molecules and protons and neutrons and things like that. All right? So I can express this conversion factor in terms of carbon in several ways. One way I can express it is in terms of the number of carbon atoms. Now, this thing is called Avogadro's number. And by definition, it's the number of things in one mole. Okay, so the mole now becomes that counting factor. A mole is like a gross. A mole is like a dozen. Okay, but now a mole is anything or any collection of items that contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those items. So I can now say that if I have one mole of carbon atoms, average carbon atoms, that collection will contain 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. That's kind of the same thing as saying that there are 144 jelly beans in one gross of jelly beans. In other words, it's the number of things that I have in my grouping factor. Okay, everybody see that analogy? So I can use this in the same sort of way that I use this conversion factor in the jelly bean problems. It's another way I can express this as well. I can do it in terms of a mass to mole relationship. I also know, based upon the argument that I just placed up here, that if I have one mole of carbon atoms, that collection should weigh 12.011 grams. All right? So I now have mole to gram conversion. This is a lot like saying that one gross of jelly beans has a mass of 180 grams of jelly beans. And I was able to get to this, again, because I knew what the average mass of a jelly bean was. Likewise, I was able to make the same sort of relationship with carbon atoms because I knew, to begin with, what the mass of a single carbon atom happened to be. So, the goal for class on Wednesday is to be able to apply these kinds of definitions, which involve counting by weighing in large batches with atoms and molecules, to chemical systems. So that's what we're going to practice on Wednesday. So we'll see you then.